All right. Hey everyone, Dr. Beth Wesley here. I am going to see if I can invite my friend April on um, so you guys can check her out. I just invited her to watch the video. As soon as I see her pop on, I'm going to add her. Um, I'm really, really excited for you guys to hear April's story and to know more about her and the amazing, amazing podcast she has. Um, her background is kind of uh, unbelievable. So, oh, oh, wait, yes, there we go. Ha ah, look at this. I like it to work. It's like, woo! <laughs> it, it, like, makes me feel good. Yeah, look at this! Okay, so this is my amazing friend, April. Hello, everyone. <laughs> super, um, super inspiring. Oh my gosh, I, so I even have, again, I have notes because I got to stay on track for myself in terms of asking you questions. Yeah, I've so been there, yeah. <laughs> I remember, so you had me on a guest, uh, as a guest on your podcast, and um, super funny, I remember there was one point where I got really fired up on something and then you got really fired up and then we just kept going and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, I, uh, I get a little soapboxy once in a while, but um, I try to hold myself back, but sometimes you just gotta let it go, you know? Yes, right? Oh, so I did in the video um, or in the notes here, in the description, I have your website where people can go check out your website and more info about you. I also, you know, there's that link to your podcast and everything there. So Yay. that people can check out, but I just wanted people to get to know you more and uh, more about your story. Because as I learned more about you, I was blown away with what I learned. I was like, oh my gosh, I would have never guessed like never in a million years guessed some of the stuff that you have like gone through in your own life. So, um, I'm just really excited. <laughs> yes. So tell, yeah. me, <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about you, your background, your story, kind of just jump right into it. Well, I'll tell you the normal stuff first, like the normal things that people want to know when they first ask you about yourself and then we'll get real abnormal. Sure. Okay. But, <laughs> um, so I live in the Minneapolis St. Paul area with my husband and my cute little daughter who's about a year and a half old, mm -hmm. super adorable, Brutus little baby girl, not really baby anymore, toddler girl. But anyway, um, we live in Minneapolis St. Paul and I do data science and independent consulting for my job, um, which is fun for some and kind of boring for other people. Um, but on the side, like you said, I host the Women Inspired podcast and I got really excited about doing that because I realized I can kind of do whatever I want with my days. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't have a boss telling me what my goals are. I don't have somebody telling me what I have to get done in a particular day. This is all totally directed by me. And that's the coolest thing ever when you realize you have the freedom to experiment and like think about what you actually want to do and so that has been just gas on the fire lately and so I'm, I'm literally like experimenting with a bazillion things right now and it's so much fun it's been just a blast awesome yeah so yeah. how do you end up even because it sounds like from the job that you do day to day that it it doesn't really like naturally flow into this like inspiring podcast for women how did that come about right really a it's bit a little bit background. strange yeah yeah so I um I'm a big believer that people should and you hear this a lot right like you hear oh be intentional about your life and be intentional about you how you live and like what the hell does that mean anyway <laughs> so to me <laughs> to me what that means is that I really want to think about the people I want to spend my time with and the activities that I want to spend my time doing because what it really boils down to is that we really only have one shot at being here. We really only have one life that we've been given and it is such an amazingly incredible gift to be here and be healthy and be able to, I just have to say hi to Bruce who just joined Bruce Cantor is an amazing friend of mine who like supports this 
um, uh, journey that I've been on. So a big hi to Bruce. Um, <laughs> so I have really cultivated this mindset of the idea that I want to spend my days doing things that are really meaningful to me. Um, yeah. I'll give you a little bit of background on how I got there. Um, I, you know, I had a very different upbringing when I was a kid. So when I was very young, super normal family, mom, dad, blah, blah, brother, all the stuff. Um, when I was fairly young, though, my dad got sick, and he actually was diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, we watched my dad go through um, an incredible fight with colon cancer. Ultimately, he passed wow. away when I was 11. Um, and if you've ever lost someone close to you, you realize how... Um, I guess how much perspective you get from a situation like that. Yeah. Um, shortly after that. So we went through all the crazy that happens, you know, after a family member passes away. I mean, the grief, the, you know, trying to like regain some normalcy, all of that. Um, and then shortly after that, I started getting sick. So I was experiencing oh. some really, really strange physical symptoms. Um, it was, it was very bizarre. And when we first went to the doctor, I mean, they basically diagnosed me as grieving adolescent with a side of hysterical girl. Like, I'm just attention seeking and I'm just trying to um, get attention from people Ooh. because I was grieving my dad passing away. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, uh, long story short, I mean, I had crazy physical symptoms, numbness, paralysis, all this nuts stuff. I went through a number of um, physical tests and we found out MRIs, spinal taps, all the crazy stuff. We found out that I have MS, which at the time we were like, holy crap, like I'm way too young. This is yeah. so not what is supposed to happen to you, but we were just completely shocked. And so, um, sorry, this is moving. I'm trying to hold my phone. Um, we were completely shocked about this. And so, you know, the doctor said there's a treatment, luckily, but it is injections once a week. You're gonna have to give yourself shots. And I was like, holy crap, like I, I can't do this. So he said, all right, let's go home, take some time to think about it. This isn't imminent, you don't have to decide today, but you should yeah. decide soon. And so I went home and I thought about it with my mom and, um, a couple weeks later, I went blind for the first time. Um, it was incredibly shocking, as you can imagine. And uh, luckily, after about six weeks or so, my sight came back. Um, and then oh. a few weeks after that, I went blind again. And we just decided, like, oh, hell no. Like, I'm going to take oh. charge of this. I'm going to take the medication they gave me. And we're going to just shoot for as healthy of a situation as we can. Um, and so you imagine all of that happening when you're a kid and you're like an adolescent and you're just like so awkward, you could just die because you're like <laughs> <laughs> in, in junior high, like seriously put yourself back in junior high and then add all this crazy on top of it. Like, blah, oh my God, it was wretched. Yeah. Um, but really that experience of just understanding what, what life looks like as a healthy, like healthy alive person and what mm -hmm. it can look like when you don't have that has really given me perspective that I just I never could have gotten in another way I don't yeah. think so I mean all wow. of that has made me really want to spread a little inspiration out there and help people yeah. live in a very intentional way mm -hmm. without having to go through something like that so that's kind of my like side goal. <laughs> yeah. I would say that sounds like your like real mission in life, right? It is. I mean, now that I see, I mean, there was a time when I was in graduate school, um, you know, I went to graduate school in Nebraska. I was getting my PhD and luckily the medication I went on was crazy work. It was working so well. It was amazing. And I realized one day that like, I was just kind of going through the paces and not making any intentional decisions. And I was just sort of like letting the time pass. 
And, you know, it hit me one day, like, I'm able-bodied and I haven't been that way my entire life. And two, thinking about my dad who passed away, mm -hmm. what would he give for the days that I'm wasting? Oh. And then two, oh, wow. me, the little adolescent girl who like can't see and just desperately wants to play tennis and like can't, what would she yeah. give for the day that I'm wasting today? And so it's just been such a huge thing that I think we can do better. I think we can, we have way more control than we think we do. We are way more badass than we give ourselves credit for. And <laughs> I just think people can do so much more. You just have to be in the right mindset. And I'm trying to help people get there. Okay. Wow. This yeah. is like such a power packed message. Yay. I mean, it's incredible, really. So, I mean, besides like your history and story, you know, in your podcast, I mean, are there other little things that you do every day just to wake up and be like, boom, I am, I'm going to be a badass today. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, there's things that I definitely tell myself. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a big believer. Like I call myself a life experience junkie. Like if there's some crazy thing out there, I want to try it. Like if there's a place I want to go there, if there's a weird thing, I want to eat it or whatever, <laughs> or like, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> like some weird food, I'm going to eat it. Like I just, I want to try all these different things. And it's, it's largely because of this mindset that I've cultivated. Mm -hmm. And luckily I've married somebody who has exactly the same mindset. And so he's kind of another bit of gas on my fire, which is great. But yeah, you know, I'm not unlike anyone else where I'm absolutely terrified to do a lot of these things, but I've really worked on, um, you know, one episode of my, my podcast, I talked with, um, a woman named Ashley Smith, and we had a big conversation about fear and about how um, you have to move forward in spite of that. And everybody's afraid and everybody, you know, has a hard time sometimes, but I feel like your risk tolerance is a muscle and you can work on it in the same way that you work on any other muscle. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can lift two pounds today. Great. Lift two pounds. Maybe tomorrow yeah. you can lift three pounds. Great. Lift three pounds. And someday, you're going to be like deadlifting two times your body weight and you're going to wonder who that person was a couple of years ago. And it's just amazing what you can do if you really start to work on that muscle. Wow. Yes. Um, okay. So in terms of you calling yourself an experienced junkie, I recently saw some pictures you posted <laughs> where I was like almost wetting myself just seeing the pictures. I was like, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Skydiving. Yeah. That's, that's one of your hobbies. Hobbies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, la la, whatever. Oh, um, okay. Jump out of planes. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did my first skydive in 2011. I was like, maybe I'll put that on my bucket list. Maybe I want to do it. I'm like, but I bet it's expensive. And then I called out there and it was like 200 bucks. I was like, oh God, I'm doing that this weekend. <laughs> and so I signed up like an idiot. And then... <laughs> I got in the plane, like, I'll send you the link to my first skydive. I look like a crazy person. I'm so afraid. It's not even funny. Like, I look like someone's killing me. It's really, really oh. scary. <laughs> um, but seriously, like, they had to, like, like, pry my hand off of the grab bar in the plane and push me out. I was so afraid. But now it's gotten to the point where, like, I arrange my consulting calls so that I don't have to physically be anywhere. And like Friday this past week, I worked from the drop zone and I just used their Wi-Fi. And in between taking meetings, I went and jumped on planes. So oh. I mean, it's amazing like where that's a perfect example of my risk tolerance muscle. It's really different today than it was in 2011 when I made my first skydive. Okay. Wow. Yes. Risk tolerance muscle. <laughs> Yes. If anybody wants to be convinced to go skydiving, by the way, I'm the person to talk to. I have a really good track record. Like I got my old boss's boss, like my director from Target. I got him and his wife to go. So yeah, I have a pretty good track record. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So uh, what's the, I just, I'm just curious. Cause you mentioned like, you'll be like, yeah, I want to eat that. What's the craziest thing you've eaten? the craziest thing I've eaten. I mean, I don't know if it's that crazy, but like, 
maybe it looks weird, but um, mm -hmm. it's actually really delicious. If you order, um, if you go out for sushi and you order like, um, like a shrimp piece of sashimi or um, sushi or nigiri, lots of times yeah. they'll give you like, they'll fry the shrimp head you know, with like its little eyes and crazy tentacle things. I know okay. it sounds really disgusting, but it's actually like really, really good. So um, that's probably the weirdest <laughs> thing that I would eat with any regularity are these weird fried shrimp heads that you get um, when you're at sushi places because it's like a little bonus. <laughs> a bonus, a garnish. Mm -hmm. Right, eating the right. Garnish. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, gee. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. What's the best place that you've traveled to? Oh, gosh. No question. Um, oh, God. That's actually hard. But, okay. I'll go with my first gut instinct. Um, for our honeymoon, my husband and I traveled to um, Tanzania, and we spent all, uh, the largest amount of time in the northern Serengeti, and I seriously feel like my soul was born there. Like, I, I would have quit my job and stayed there and just figured out how to, you know, work and make money enough to live. It was just the coolest experience I've ever had. Completely remote. Awesome. Puddle jumper planes to get there. Hi, Bruce. I know you've been to Africa too. Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was just phenomenal. It's just such a cool experience. Like I said, super remote. You live in like with the animals. We'd wake up to like lion tracks outside of our door. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was so cool. Cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, so, um, with your, with your podcast and everything that you reach so many women each week with that, um, what's been one of your favorite interviews on there or something that like your favorite nugget that you learned from somebody? You know, there's a lot of themes emerging. Um, one person that I have to highlight, I had the amazing pleasure to interview a woman named Gerda Weissman Klein. She's a Holocaust survivor and an Academy Award winner and a Presidential Medal of Freedom winner, awardee, whatever you call it. Wow. She is just one of the strongest, most powerful people I've ever met. She, I mean, obviously survived the Holocaust, survived the death marches, thousands of, oh. you know, girls died in these marches because at the time they were at the end of the war and the Nazis couldn't afford bullets to kill them anymore, literally to kill Jewish people anymore. So they had to find a cheaper way to kill them. Oh, oh. she just popped off for a second. I don't know why. No, we'll fix it. She was in the middle of a really good story. I want the story. Hi, 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 hi. I don't know what happened. Um, you popped off and I was like, wait, you're in the middle of the story. Don't stop. Um, so I, uh, I do have low batteries, so I might have to go find a charger. I probably can find one though. Um, live problems. So uh, no, she survived the Nazi death marches. And when she was liberated, the American soldier who liberated her was Kurt Klein, who was, uh, who ended up being her husband. They ended up getting married. Um, she's just like, oh my God, go Google her and look her up. Listen to her episode. She's just phenomenal. And I just saw that Laura Zick joined our um, little uh, Facebook Live right now. She's also yeah. amazing. She is episode number one. Um, Lady went down on the Miracle on the Hudson plane, and she has a phenomenal story. And you talk about no. somebody who lives life to their fullest. She's it. She is just like the real deal. So hi. Oh Laura. my gosh. Okay. I'm going to put some of these episodes in the comments below. Yeah. So that people watching this, they don't have to like search or whatever. They can just go get these amazing episodes. Yeah. They're so, they're so wonderful. Like so oh. many great women. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for my charger, but keep talking. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, some of the, um, like, questions that I, you know, normally ask people, like, we've covered so much of this, just so much great content. Um, one thing I want to know, because I asked you about kind of what you work with, I would love to know what, um, what's one of the biggest hurdles that you have had to, you know, or one of the biggest blocks that you've had to, like, bust through in the past year mm -hmm. or two. 
Um, oh gosh. Um, honestly, it literally is still that fear effect of, you know, it's just a bugger. Like we all, we all struggle with it. I think, um, I found my charger by the way. We all <laughs> struggle with this whole ass, this whole idea of just being afraid to be completely who we are and being afraid to express our opinions. And especially as women, I feel like we we're afraid to like live out loud and be big and have big opinions. And I'm, it, you know, it's something that I'm still working on, especially with the podcast where I'm, I'm kind of out there and I don't know who is listening to it. And I might say something that might offend someone or they might not agree with, and I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know you've heard those types of things with your business too. So um, I still struggle with that because I'm one of those people who just wants to make people happy and I don't want to go cause problems for anybody. That's the last thing that I want to do with this. So yeah. um, that's probably the biggest thing that I'm working on right now. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. That's yeah. A really good it's one. not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. So the other thing, and this is just me kind of where my brain goes on stuff. So for you living with a like chronic illness, yeah. what are some of your things that you do on an everyday basis to make sure that you stay as healthy as possible? Because I know you work out a lot, right? And yep. Super into fitness. What yep. are your other kind of go-tos? I mean, so MS is an autoimmune disease, which means that all the same things that people do to keep their immune system healthy, keep themselves from getting sick on a just day-to-day -day basis normally, those are really good for this type of condition as well. So eat well, drink water, sleep, exercise. It's amazing what that will do for your body. So even though like, yes, I have an 18 month old and whatever, even when I was pregnant, I lifted and I just, I, sorry, I doctor shopped until I found a doctor who was okay with me doing um, some decent physical activity while I was pregnant. And I just said, I'm not going to hurt myself. That is the last thing I want to do. I'm not going to put myself at risk, but like, I'm going to hit it pretty hard. Even while I'm pregnant shortly thereafter, hit it pretty hard right after I um, had the baby, you know, carefully like easing back into it. But I just want to make sure that I'm constantly you know, keeping my body healthy. And then we're careful about what we eat. We make sure that we, um, you know, eat organic as much as we can. Um, yeah. I don't know. We're just, we're really careful about those basic health things that um, can really keep you healthy. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I'm a total wine enthusiast. I love it. Um, <laughs> adore it. Adore it. Like, you know, life is short, man. I have to have a glass of wine once in a while, but um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give up my workout for, I mean, there's, there's really not much that I'll allow to get in the way of that because I know that it's helping my body and it's keeping me stronger. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Last question I have for you is what is one thing, and you've shared a lot with us already, but what is one thing that would really surprise people to learn about you? Um, oh, okay. This is like a weird thing, but <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a certified scuba diver and I'm really like deathly, like so phobic mm. of fish. Like I'm really, really afraid of them. Um, super afraid of them. So it's a, a little bit of a parent, but yeah, fish. So afraid, like so scared of them. Like fish? Mm -hmm. Like lake fish and ones in aquariums. Like, oh, no, like, oh, <gasps> no, Blech. No, I just can't. Wow. I just can't. Okay. That is, mm -hmm. that, I want to say that's really surprising. Somebody who just jumps that leaps out of planes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Afraid of fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny. Oh, well, this has been amazing. I appreciate your time so much. And I appreciate you sharing so much information with, with everybody and that, um, I want to say like everything you do on your podcast and all that message that you get out. So, so important. And then your explanation behind it on your why behind your what is mm -hmm. so inspiring. So I hope that so many people watching really take this to heart and then, you know, take it from here. And if you are watching and you found this helpful, 
click the share button. There are so many people who can use this message and use April's story to just get the most out of every day, I want to say. Yeah, and I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, there's such a huge piece that our health plays in this and none of us are guaranteed to be healthy tomorrow even. I mean, it's not something that's guaranteed to us. And so everything that we can do to try to extend that length of time and and make sure that we're doing well so that we can live big, vibrant, full lives. That's such a huge thing. And so the work that you do with women's nutrition and really, you know, tailoring it to that individual person is such a huge deal. I was so, so impressed with you when I had you on the podcast. So it is like a mutual admiration society today. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, thank you so much. And if you guys have any other questions or anything else, don't hesitate to comment below because we'll both kind of be checking. Um, or message, you know, either one of us to get more information. Um, Yeah, but otherwise, thank you so much. And everybody, have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.